Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question combination sum three. All right. So in this question, we're going to find all the possible combinations of K numbers that add up to a certain number N. Given that only numbers from one through nine can be used at each combination and, oh sorry, and each of these combinations should be a unique set of numbers. All right. Note all numbers will be positive integers and the solution set must not contain duplicate uh, combinations. All right, so let's take a quick example at this one. So we have a K value of three and we have an N value of nine. So what does that mean? So that means that we're gonna have three uh, numbers or elements which add up to the value nine. So in this case, we have one, two, and six, right? So three elements. And when you add them, so six plus two is eight plus one, nine. Same over here. So five plus three, eight plus one, nine. 2 plus 3, 5 plus 4, 9. So they all add up. So all three of those numbers add up to 9. And we're going to end up outputting that list. And also notice that there's no duplicates. So we have 1, 2, and 6. But at the same time, we don't have 6, 2, and 1, which essentially is the same thing just written uh, in a different order. So that's also one more thing we want to take care about. So how can we actually go about and solve this question? So let's take a quick look at that. Okay. So over here, I'm going to stick with the same example that we just looked at. So we have k value of 3 and we have n is equal to 9. So how can we actually try to come up with all of the possibilities? So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through all of the numbers. And since the k value is 3, we have three possible numbers, right? So we have one number here, one number here, and one number here. Uh, sorry, these numbers don't mean anything. I just wrote it. Okay. So we have three empty spots. So how are we actually going to end up filling them? So what we're going to do is we're going to use backtracking in order to do that. So let's see where the backtracking comes into play. So we're, we'll start off by putting this as a value of one. So this is going to be one. So what are some possibilities for this value? So this could be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, right? It could be any of those numbers, but just for the sake of this, let's just choose a number of two. So we have one and two, and what does three have to be in order to satisfy the condition of n equals nine? So that's just nine minus one plus two, which is nothing else but nine minus three, which equals to six, right? So we can put this as a value of six. So this is one of our combinations, one, two, and six, right? And so we got one answer and we're gonna add this to our results. So one comma two comma six. But how do we get the other combinations of this? So in order to do that, we're going to be using backtracking. And what we're, and what we're going to do now is, so in the second position over here, we could have chosen several different possibilities. We can choose three, four, five, six, and all the numbers up through nine, right? So let's remove this and we're going to backtrack one step. So we're going to go back one step. So we're going to go back over here. And once we're over here, we're going to look at the other possibilities. So we're, uh, we can't use one since it's already here. We've already tried out two. So now let's try out the number three. So we have one and three uh, giving us a value of four. So what could this number be over here? Well, that could be a number five, right? So one plus three plus five adds up to nine. So this is another solution for us. So similarly, that way we're gonna add up this solution to our answer. So one comma three comma five. And we're just gonna keep going on like this. All right, so after this, we can try out with the number four. So we have four over here. And what are the other possibilities for this? So we could have a possibility, but that would include uh, having the number four, right? But we can't have that. We can, uh, the set has to be unique, right? So we can't have a repetition of two numbers. So we're, we're done with that. But over here, we have a slight uh, thing that we need to deal with. So what happens when we put the number five over here? So we have one and five. And what goes over here in order to fulfill this condition? And the answer to that is the number three. So one, five, and three uh, is a valid combination, which adds up to the value of nine. But we already have this in our answer. We already have one, three, and five. So in order to actually combat with such a issue, and even we have one more case, right? Which is the case when we have, when we had four over here, right? So four was being repeated. So in order to take care of both of those cases, what we're gonna do is, so let's say we have a value over here, which is the number three. Everything which goes in this uh, value over here has to be greater than three. So, and that way what's going to happen is that we're not going to have any more repetitions. So let's just go back to our case of one and five. So in this case, 
Uh, let's just go by it step by step. So we have one, and this has to, all of these have to add up to nine. So over here, we ended up putting the value five. So both of these combined, so just this and this, has to add up to the value of eight. And why is it eight? Well, because nine minus one, right? So what is the other number that goes here is three. But whatever number goes here has to be greater than five. So in this case, we do not have any number greater than five, which when added to five gives us a value of eight. So in that case, we cannot have any answer over here. So we're just gonna ignore it. So the same way we're gonna, we're gonna keep going, we're gonna try out all of the possibilities over here. And once we're exhausted with all of these possibilities, we're going to end up going back to the very beginning. So we go to the one and we change this over here to a two. So now the possibilities we have, so what is the number we're looking for? So all of this has to add up to nine and these two have to add up to nine minus two, which is seven, right? So both of those need to add up to seven. And what are all the possibilities that we can use? So all the possibilities have to be greater than the number two. So three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. And let's say we use three over here. Whatever goes over here has to be greater than the number three. And by doing that, we ensure that we do not have any repetition. So this is the logic that we're going to be using for our question. And let's see how we can implement it using code. All right, so let's start off with our code part of the solution. So what we're gonna do is over here, we're gonna create an empty list called results or res. And this is gonna hold out whatever we're going to output. So at the very ending of this, we're just gonna end up returning res. And over here, we're going to create our own backtracking function. All right, so let's create this function over here. So I'll call it backtrack. All right, backtrack. And what are the arguments it's going to be taking? So we're going to give it three arguments. So first, we're going to give it whatever number we're currently on. All right, so I'll just call that number x, or let's just call it num. So num is going to stand for whatever number we're currently on. If that's a little bit confusing, uh, it'll make sense really soon. And then after that, we're going to have a stack, right? So I'll call it stack. And so stack is going to kind of be like our temporary list, right? And that is going to be the one with K elements, which adds up to N. And we're going to add that to our results list at the ending. And finally, we're going to have our target. All right, so what exactly is the target? So the target is the N number that we're looking for. So in the very beginning, let's say we have an N value of nine, All right? So that means that our target for the sum of everything has to be nine. So after this, let's say we go through our first iteration and in our stack, we have the number one and then the other two numbers are empty. So now our target is gonna change into nine minus one, eight. So that's basically telling us the next two empty numbers must add up to the number eight. So that's what our target is going to be standing up, uh, standing for, that's what it means. All right, so instead of this function, we're gonna start off with our base case. So this is going to be the uh, case where we're going to kind of end or stop the backtracking, right? So when do we actually stop it? So we stop it when the length of our stack is equal to the K value. All right, so there's gonna be a point where, let's say our K value is three, our stack is going to contain three elements. So in this point, we wanna check whether, so we do have three elements, but is that actually what the three elements that we're looking for? Do those three elements add up to the value N? And in order to check that, we're gonna check if the target is equal to zero. So what we're gonna do to the target is by the time we reach the ending of our stack, it should have a value of zero, meaning that we've accounted for all of its numbers and everything does add up to whatever the end value is. So if that is the case, we're going to add that to our results. So res.append and we're gonna add our stack. And if that is not the case, we're just gonna return since we don't care about that stack anyways, right? If the stack doesn't add up to n, it, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna end it over there uh, and return whatever we have. All right, or stop the function. Okay, so we have this. And now we wanna go into the main part of this function. So over here, we're gonna go inside of this for loop. So for x in range, and what is the range going to be? So the range over here is gonna start off from our num value plus one. So we're gonna do num plus one, and we're going to go all the way up to 10, uh, and not including 10. So this is going to include everything starting from one, including one, all the way to 10, or in other words, all the way uh, up to 10, which means including nine. All right, so we have this, 
And the purpose of the num should be really clear soon. All right, so over here, we're going to have a check. So we're going to check if the x value is less than or equal to our target value. And if it is uh, less than or equal to our target value, then what we're going to do is we're going to call this backtrack function on itself. So we're going to call backtrack over here. And over here, we're going to give it the same parameters that we have here. So what is the number going to be? So the number is actually going to be the x value. And this is where the x value makes sense. So what this is doing, it's basically limiting our scope. So when we looked at our uh, drawing over here, what we did is, so if we had the number two over here, for everything past two, so for this value here and this value over here, all of those values were greater than two. And that's exactly what we're doing by calling the x value here. So just to make this more clear, outside of this, in the very beginning, we're gonna call our backtrack function, sorry, backtrack function, and when we call this function, we're gonna give it a num value of zero. So that means we're starting off at the number one. So that's kind of the uh, role of num. And uh, now that we're doing this, let's just finish this off. So our stack is going to just start off as an empty list. And uh, finally, the target is in the, initially is going to be a value of n. All right, so let's go back over here where we're calling our backtrack function. So we call, we're gonna call it with the value of x for the num. And over here, what is our stack going to be? So in the very beginning, our stack is well an empty list. So to this empty list, we're going to add whatever the x index is, whatever this number is. So in this case, let's say we're going through the first iteration. So the first number we're going to have, our stack is just right now uh, with the k value of three, let's say. So it's just gonna be three empty spaces. But once we go to this step over here, we're going to have one over here, right? So one is going to be our first number, and then we're gonna have two empty spaces following that. And this, uh, we wanna find out the value of these two empty spaces. And that being said, the target is also going to change. So in the beginning with three empty spaces, our target is the end value. But now we wanna, since we added a first value, we want to account for that. And how can we do that? We can do that by going to our target and subtracting it by whatever our x value is. So that is going to be our new target. And by the very ending, if we found a valid uh, combination of numbers, then in that case, the target is going to end up being zero, and only then we're gonna add it to our results list. All right, so hopefully this is all making sense. And finally, if uh, this is not the case, so if our x value is greater than our target, then we're just gonna return. All right, and this should be it. So. And let's just submit this and let's see what happens. So submit. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. And if you did not understand how this works, uh, I would highly recommend that you put this inside of a debugger and see how it works step by step, which should make it a lot easier to understand. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you guys.